In this video we introduce the concept of the Gibbs energy. The Gibbs energy is a state function in thermodynamics and is arguably the most important uh, state function that uh, thermodynamics has to offer. Uh, as we will see, uh, once we pass this chapter on the second law on entropy, we will be using uh, most frequently the Gibbs energy to talk about equilibrium and the rest of important uh, topics that we have to discuss in thermodynamics. So in this video we're going to see the definition of Gibbs energy and how useful it is. Uh, Alright, so uh, we're going to start uh, by looking at the second law of thermodynamics and how it applies generally. right? And then uh, we're going to try to see a special case of the second law and then we'll introduce the Gibbs energy uh, after that. All right, so the second law. Uh, we have that uh, the calculation of the change in entropy in the entire universe allows you to predict the spontaneity of a process or whether the process is at equilibrium. All right, so the universe has two components and the system and the surroundings. And these are the two contributions that you have to the change in entropy. Right, so uh, if the change in entropy is larger than zero, we say that this process is spontaneous. And if it's equal to zero, then we say that this process is at equilibrium. All right, uh, so it turns out that uh, that calculation of the change in entropy of the universe, the statement of the second law, uh, uh, sometimes it can be cumbersome to calculate because you have to handle the surroundings. And uh, while we actually know quite well how to calculate the change in entropy in the system, that's what uh, uh, we control, the surroundings are or can be generally, uh, or sometimes they can be difficult to calculate. Right, so uh, it would be very useful if somehow we would actually uh, be able to have a criterion for spontaneity that does not involve the surroundings and it only involves the system. That would be very useful to us, again, because the surroundings can be a little cumbersome, but the system is something that we can handle quite well. All right, so what we're going to do is try to see okay, somehow we can turn this expression into something that only depends on the system, because again, that will be extremely useful to us. It will avoid uh, the calculation of the change in entropy in the surroundings. All right, so let's then plug in here what the definition of the uh, surroundings is. All right, so delta S of the universe is going to be equal to delta S of the system plus Q of the surroundings over T. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do here is assume that we have thermal equilibrium uh, between system and surroundings, so that T of the system is the same as the T of the surroundings and uh, that the process is isothermal, right? So that that T doesn't change, and when you were integrating this differential of Q over T, then you can get that directly, right? So T is constant. That is my first approximation, that this is going to be an isothermal process. And you also have thermal equilibrium between system and surroundings, right? So this T is the T of the system and the T of the surroundings. Okay, so then uh, uh, what we know from uh, our earlier work on the heat of the surroundings is that you can uh, write it as minus uh, heat of the system actual over T, and this has to be larger or equal than zero. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, now we actually have that everything depends on the system, but we can take this a little uh, further and uh, try to see if we can actually uh, have everything in terms of state functions. Okay, so uh, if we assume constant pressure, okay, then we know what the definition of heat in the system is. That is going to be Q sub P, but that is the same thing as uh, the change in enthalpy. And enthalpy is a state function. Right, so what we can do is then assume that we're working here under constant pressure, so the process will be isobaric. Okay, system minus uh, delta H of the system over T, that you're equal than zero. And the condition here, in going from here to there, is that this is isobaric, so constant pressure. OK, great. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do from here on is simply rearrange this expression so that uh, uh, it looks a little bit more uh, convenient. The first thing that I'm going to do is multiply through by T. All right, so uh, I simply multiply by T throughout, which is this T and then that, and then I'm going to rearrange this uh, to simply, actually I'm not going to rearrange this, what I'm going to do is multiply it by minus 1, 
Okay, so let's see how that works. If I multiply that by minus 1, t delta s of the universe is going to be equal to minus t delta s of the system plus delta h of the system. But notice that if you change the sign uh, uh, to this part of the equation, then what happens is that this inequality now turns less or equal than 0. Okay, so again, notice that if you actually have here a number of plus 20, uh, that number is not even zero, but if you multiply it by one, by minus one, that number is now minus twenty, and that means that this number is less or equal than zero. Okay, so notice how that change in this uh, inequality uh, applies when you uh, or that reverses when you ch uh, change the sign uh, in the equation. Okay, so now is when, I, when I'm going to rearrange this uh, to make it more convenient. T delta s of the universe is going to be equal to delta h of the system minus t delta s of the system and that is larger or equal than zero. Uh, so let's stop here and then uh, uh, try to take, the, uh, take a breather and see what we've done here. Our problem was that uh, this is the second law of thermodynamics but that sometimes can be very difficult to calculate because you have to take care of two parts of the universe, the system and the surroundings. Again the surroundings can be cumbersome uh, but we're really good at handling the system. So what we've done is try to come up with a version of the second law of thermodynamics that only contains uh, state functions of the system. That's very useful. However, we have to take a couple of approximations. We've had to uh, assume that the process is isothermal and isobaric. But under those conditions, constant temperature and constant pressure, then we actually have a really convenient version of the second law that only depends on the system. These are quantities that are easy to calculate. Right, uh, change in enthalpy, we know how to do that. Change in entropy in the system, we know how to do that. We actually have a new version of the second law that is very, very simple to use. Okay, great, so, so what is the Gibbs energy in all of this? Well, uh, now what we're going to do is introduce the Gibbs energy to see how it's related to this is the discussion of the second law. All right, so here's how, what the definition of the Gibbs energy is. The Gibbs energy is just enthalpy minus Ts by definition. Okay, now what we can do is uh, uh, see, uh, take first derivatives, for example, because notice that we have here uh, uh, these uh, changes, right? So the first thing that you do is take first derivatives, and we're going to assume that we're working under constant temperature, isothermal. Okay, so under constant temperature, the derivative of that is simply going to be uh, T differential of S. Okay, again, if this is isothermal, which is the condition that uh, we need for the second law in this derivation. All right, so uh, if now we integrate, okay, the temperature is constant, then you have delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S, okay? What we have is that this is exactly the same thing as that, okay? And what that means is that we can actually use this as a criterion for spontaneity working not only at constant temperature, but also constant pressure and then uh, the criterion for spontaneity is this one. Okay, so, so again, essentially what the Gibbs energy is, the way that we have defined this, is simply uh, a way to just recast the second law uh, as a, uh, you know, in a way that we just have a new uh, state function for the system uh, that is very easy to calculate. So again, this is just a change in enthalpy and that is a change in entropy. But this provides directly uh, a way to calculate the spontaneity. Again, this only works if you're working isothermally, but also isobarically, okay? Isobaric. All right, so under constant temperature and const uh, constant pressure and constant temperature, then you can actually use uh, the change in Gibbs energy uh, as a uh, criterion for spontaneity. And the way that we have defined the Gibbs energy uh, makes the calculation fairly straightforward, right? You only have to calculate the change in enthalpy. Uh, in the system, change in entropy in the system, and then you're done. Okay, you, that's, that is your new criterion for uh, uh, spontaneity. All right, so um, uh, again, the, the limitation of what we're doing here and what we'll be doing uh, from now on is that this only applies if you're working under constant pressure and constant temperature. Okay, so what we've done essentially is just throw away the generality of the second law that applies to any process, right? So non-isothermal, non-isobaric, doesn't matter. The second law applies always, right? Uh, but again, because, because this can be use, difficult to use uh, sometimes, we've uh, enforced a couple of conditions, isothermal and isobaric, 
And if we do that, it turns out that calculating that, that spontaneity or determining the spontaneity is very simple. As a matter of fact, we can introduce a new thermodynamic variable, which is the Gibbs energy, defined like this. And the Gibbs energy, if that Gibbs energy change in Gibbs energy in a process is negative, then we can say the process is spontaneous. If it's equal to zero, then we can say that the process is at equilibrium. Right, so uh, that is uh, the introduction of the Gibbs energy. And in the next video, we're going to see uh, a new thermodynamic variable, which is going to be the Helmholtz energy, which is very similar to the Gibbs energy, but applies under a different set of conditions.